right, Shalom, Shalom. This is Brother Jeremiah. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, and the name is only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Um, I got a video I want to show y'all. It's about like a four minute, three minute. I'm going to edit it the best I can to show y'all this video. This guy by the name of Anthony Kohan. Uh, Kohan, he's a historian, black guy, Jake. And, uh, man, it don't matter what level of intelligence that this world has given us, we're still under the curses. We're still under the curses. But I want you to see, when I show you this video, it's, it's so uncomfortable. I was so, I was uncomfortable watching this video. It came across my, uh, my YouTube channel and I clicked it again. I watched it a long time ago. But I watched it again today, and the video is so, it's, it's not even funny, really. It's a, it's a serious sickness, and I want y'all to see this video and just pay attention. Pay attention to the, the, the historian and the, uh, the gentleman that he is doing the experiment on, okay? Check it out, all right? Fraption you'll see on the right here. Um, that was put on people who either threatened to escape or people who had done it before and were captured or returned. It was meant to keep you from getting into the woods. Uh, the hooks would catch on vines and whatnot. And I thought, what if I tried to follow any information, any points of this man's journey through this one ad? So I had a picture. Uh, uh, not this one, but actually a photo of a man wearing it. I took it to a blacksmith and gave it to him. He gave me a very awkward look, and I told him that I wanted him to replicate it. Um, he said, sure. He uh, demanded $150, and three days later, he called me and said, your thing is ready. <laughs> I went to pick up my thing, and before I tell you the end of that story, I'm going to demonstrate the thing. Could I get my volunteers? Now, this is a replica of a slave collar. And after I do my demonstration, I'll pass it around. We'll do show and tell. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to stand right here. You, sir, can stand right here. You stand where you are. I use a simple nut and bolt to keep this closed. And gentlemen, you're going to reach down and pick it up. And you're going to open it up. That's right. You, sir, are going to put your finger over your Adam's apple. We hope your neck is not too thick for this. And we hope we don't clip you. OK, hold on one second. Are you all right? OK, close it. Is it pinching you? Not yet. Good. Remove your finger, and I want you to put your hands on both of these bars that are extending in front of you. I will just get this on so it doesn't fall off. To date, this has never gotten stuck on anyone, so <laughs> we will hope. <laughs> and my volunteers, please stand to the side, but do not sit down. OK, so I'm going to tell the rest of the story. Um, are you OK? Great. Um, this was put on, uh, on a person um, to keep them from getting into the woods. If you traveled with this, first of all, you'd stick out like a sore thumb. People would know you did something wrong. Um, you could not lay down or sleep with this. But in my mind, I had it all figured out. Um, I had seen in the woods at times where trees had fallen and were leaning up against other trees at an angle. I figured I'd wear it. Uh, straddle the tree and get a good night's sleep. I figured that if I came face to face with any danger, I could just simply take one of the prongs and, you know, fight off the wild animal or whatnot. Or um, if I crossed a stream and I got wet, I could take off my clothes, put them on the prongs, and keep on running. <laughs> so I had it all figured out. I go, I pick it up, um, the man's assistants put it on my neck, and I instantly realized that I could not go on my journey wearing this thing. The reason being, if I tripped and fell, the prongs would hit the ground first, and my neck would break. 
That was my $150 history lesson. My other one was I paraded around in this for 20 minutes having pictures taken and then was in bed for the next three days with a sore neck and shoulders. So we're going to take that off of you. But before we do, how do you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. You know, very uncomfortable. If you stay in there for 20 minutes, a half hour, you would be exhausted. Okay. Thank you. So did y'all see it? Um, the guy is, he, he puts it on, he puts this, this yoke of iron on slave yoke on another black man. There was about five black people in the audience. There was about five black people in the audience. The rest of the people were all Edomites, were all white people. Why did he choose the black dude? Right? That is a destroyed mindset. And that's a sickness that our people are plagued with. He could have clearly used... Why did he use that man? Why did he use him? I don't get it. I don't, it doesn't, I don't understand that. I don't understand why he chose him. Like the, 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 the slave syndrome, right? The, uh, the, just the mental illnesses that we haven't healed from. And he chose to put... The slave, the yoke of iron, the slave collar around that man's neck. How destroyed are you? Why would you, why? Why? I don't get it. Basically, this is what's happening. This is Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? Even though he has worldly knowledge, it's not talking about worldly knowledge. It's talking about the knowledge of the Bible, the knowledge of the scriptures. Because thou have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that ye that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten my, the laws of thy God. We've forgotten the laws of our God. I will also forget thy children. Right? So, man, the, the curses are, are still here, alive in effect, um, clearly showing that, man, we are still under the curses and we're not all the way in the New Testament. Our new covenant. We're not all the way in a new covenant, right? Um, let's get this. Let's get this. This is Deuteronomy, but that's a, that's a whole another topic, whole another lesson. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-eight. It says, "The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart." I'm astonished, right? I'm I am. I'm puzzled. I, I don't even know what to say when I see this. I'm I'm uncomfortable watching this video. It is uncomfortable for me watching this video, right? So, let alone the dude said he was uncomfortable, right? I don't get it. I don't care. This this is the people in the audience. The the white people in the audience are just. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Um. I mean, what he, what he had around his neck was clearly a, a yoke of iron. If you go <clears throat> and type in <clears throat> yoke of iron, uh, that will pop up. That's one of the things that will pop up is that collar. That's one of the collars that will pop up. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Uh, thou, therefore, shall thy ser thou ser serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until thy be destroyed. Until, so like it, until he destroy thee. We're so destroyed as a nation of people, we're putting yokes of irons on our own necks. Now we know the spiritual. They took the physical yokes and we're still, until we be destroyed. So the yokes of iron came off when they didn't need the yokes of iron no more. When they didn't need the, the physical uh, uh, brace or, or chain, whatever device, collar you want to put on, whatever you want to say. And they didn't need the collar no more after they saw that we were mentally, spiritually in bondage. They didn't need that, so they took it off. 
And now we're putting it around ourselves. That's sad. That's sad. Right? And let's just say, man, it's, it's, it's just something to, I'm, I'm just, I had to make a video about it. I had to have y'all see this too. Like, people got to see the, the, the sickness that we're in. It's just, it's too, it's too much. Like I said, we got a lot of work to do. We need to get out here and put that work in as a nation of people, man. We can't trust on, we can't, we can't put our trust in, in other people. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 25, it says, Withhold thy feet from being unsoon, unsoon, it says, which means barefoot. It says, and thy throat from thirst. Uh, but thou, but thou saidest, there is no hope. No for I have loved strangers, and and after them will I go. That's what we say all the time. We trust our enemy so much, man. It says, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. That is that is so true, man. We got some some super coons, some coons, some super coons. Uh, uh, Man, we just destroy people, man. And it says, after them will I go. That's exactly what's happening today. Right? This says, you know, uh, uh, we withhold thy foot from being assumed. I mean, we run without with bare, being barefooted, and we'll, uh, and our thirsts will be dry. We'll, we will, it says in there, thy throat from, from thirst. But thou saidest, there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. Man, these scriptures are alive. The Bible's alive. This is, uh, let me get this. Because, um, at the end of the day, this is what we do. We end up trusting our people. I mean, our people end up trusting our enemies. Um, we do the opposite of what the Bible tells us all day long. That's what a lot of our people do. We do the opposite of what the Bible tells us not to do. This is Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. It says, As for us, our, our eyes have yet failed for our vain hope, meaning our empty hope. We have hope, but it's vain. It's of nothing. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So we're watching these people, and we're watching for a nation that can't save us. That's what we're doing at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? We still trust in our oppressors. You know? Uh, let me bring this out. Salakia. Uh, Syrac. Um, 12, in verse 10, it says, Never trust thine enemy. For as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. He tells us to not trust our enemy. Earlier in Deuteronomy 28 and 48, it says, he will, send an, he will send our enemies against us. And we're trusting those people that are against us. That's Stockholm Syndrome. You're trusting in the people that enslaved you. You're trusting in people that oppressed you. Right? That brother envies his oppressor so much to impress them. He wants to impress them with his with his minds, with his uh, uh, a level of intelligence. What are you gaining? He thinks that's gain. He thinks that's wealth. That's not wealth. That's not, that has, that's vain, like the scripture says. That's vain. Um, wisdom of Solomon, since I'm already in the apocrypha, let's get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Slakia, like like Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18. And verse um, 7, Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 7, it says, So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of righteous and destruction of the enemies. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of righteousness and destruction 
of our enemy. Those are the two ingredients that we're going to have to have. We're going to have to have righteous to receive our salvations. That's, these are some of the ingredients that we're going to have to have to receive our salvation. We're going to have to have righteousness, which is faith in keeping the law, and hope of the destruction on our enemies. Those are the two ingredients that we're going to have to have. Um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 24. Nevertheless, through envy, the devil... Uh, so like you, nevertheless, through the envy, through envy of the devil cometh death unto the world, into the world. We envied the devil. We out there telling y'all that the white man, woman and child is the devil. We're out there telling y'all that the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the uh, African man, anybody outside of Israel is the devil to us. They mean us no good. They have not. They don't have our best intentions in heart. They don't. And it says, nevertheless, therefore, envy of the devil came death into the world. Us envying them caused our destruction, caused our fall. It says, uh, came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. We find what? We find that death when we hold the side of, of the devil, right? When we hold that side, we find, when we hold on to the devil, we hold, we find death. That's exactly what we find, right? Um, Revelations chapter, we got to be praying for the, we got to be praying and wanting the, the death and destruction to come onto our enemy. As a matter of fact, let me get this. So like yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse six. It says, Seeing it is righteous, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. We're supposed to we're supposed to want, it is righteous for us to want repay uh, uh, for us to for them to be repaid the tribulation, the punishment, the harshness. That they've given us. The Bible says it is righteous that we do that. It is righteous that we do that. We're not sitting, we're not supposed to be holding a, a class for the Edomites. You got five Jakes, five black people in this classroom, and the rest of them is white people. Basically, you're holding it for the white people. The black people that was in there was just for an experiment. And a few stragglers that came in. Man, it's sad. He's trying to impress his oppressors with his level of intelligence. That's vain. That's of, that's of no uh, uh, profit at all, right? It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It is righteous to repay them that trouble you, right? That video should do something to you, you know? By the end of the day, that's what it should do. Let's see. Um, let's get this. Revelations. I don't want this to be too long of a video. It's just something that I've seen, and I had to get a lesson on it. This is Revelations chapter 13, and we know this is a closet in verse 10. It says, Let, uh, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must, 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 must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The saints are patiently, faithfully waiting to repay vengeance to those that trouble them. They're patiently waiting for this to happen. That is a righteous thing, says the Bible, right? Um, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 29, uh, 39, chapter uh, Ezekiel 39 and 25. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my name. After that, they have borne their, their shame. That collar, that um, slavery is us bearing, boring our shame. That's us going through our shame. That is our shame that we didn't listen to the Most High God. 
that we chose not to listen to him. So that's us boring our shame. It says, uh, after that they borne their shame and all their trespass, whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwell of safely in their land and none made it them afraid. When we, were met, when we were dwelling in our land, none made us afraid. We didn't have to worry about nothing. But now we do. We're terror. We're in terror all the time. Right? It says, when I when I um, have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of the out of their their enemies' land and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord, their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathens. But I have gathered them into their own land and have left them and have left none of them any more there. Thus saith the Bible. The Bible speaks, man. The, we, we will know that the Most High God led us into captivity. Beautiful scripture, man. Y'all stick in the word. Stay in the word, man. This is, the end is coming, man. And it's, it's just, it's just going to get crazier and crazier. It's going to get worse before it gets better, right? So with that, I'm going to give all praises and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. And the name is only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And uh, honest to the brothers and sisters pushing this truth and double honest to the elders that taught us this truth. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa Barak, Mashbukah. Shalom.